Fantastic. Okay, if you made the biscuit tomb and you still have an intact biscuit tomb, keep your hands up. That's impressive. Well done. Okay. Who made the who made the cross in the in the soil and the grass? Fantastic. Now, when you take it home and you water it and the grass grows, will you take a picture of it? Yeah. And, and let us have it so we can have these pictures of the of the cross and the grass. I think it will look amazing. Uh, so well done to you for whatever you've made. Now, while you take your seats again, could I have two volunteers to help me with a to help me with something? Okay, I'll give you a disclaimer now. No one's getting chained up today. So you are clear for that. Okay. Uh, uh, Reese, come and Jessica, come. Okay. Now then, in here, there are some eggs. Now, who, who came yesterday for our Easter egg hunt? Yeah? Brilliant. Did you all find some eggs? Brilliant. Okay, good stuff. Now, I went on a bit of an Easter egg hunt too. And so I've got myself some eggs. These aren't chocolate, they're plastic. But inside each of the eggs, there is something that reminds us of the Easter story. And so our two volunteers are going to take it in turns to, to take out an egg and open it and we'll see what's inside. And then the last egg, one egg that is left, I will open. So there's two each for you to open and one for me. Are you with us? So, you're with me so far? In here, can I have another volunteer? Amelia, your hand was up first. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Will you hold on to this for me? Don't open it. Don't let it out of your sight. Don't let anybody touch it. <coughs> Do nothing with that envelope until the end when I say. Okay? Just keep hold of that. Keep it safe. Don't let anyone else touch it. Make sure you can see it at all times. Okay? Don't even listen to Jonathan. If he offers you money for it, it's church money, say no. <laughs> okay. So, volunteers, can you take it in turns? When you, when you take out an egg, can you close your eyes, reach in and take out any egg, and then we'll see what's in there. Okay? So, ladies first, Jessica, close your eyes, reach in, take an egg. Now, can you open that egg and see what's inside? Can you manage? Okay, they un it unscrews, so you don't have to pull it. Look, twist it. Done? What's in there? Some gold coins. Now, can anyone tell us what that reminds us of? Where do we see coins? And you hold them up so everyone can see. Where do we see coins in the Easter story? Tyler. Anyone that's not got a mouthful of biscuit? <laughs> Emilio? I'm hearing names of Judas. Fantastic. So. Judas, brilliant. So Jesus was betrayed by one of his closest friends for 30 pieces of silver. And so we, 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 we read it, Matthew, uh, Matthew 26, Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, how much will you pay me to betray Jesus? It says they gave him 30 pieces of silver and from that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. I wonder if any of us have ever betrayed Jesus or compromised our faith for short-term gain. For Judas, it didn't work. The next chapter in Matthew, we, it tells us very early in the morning, the leading priests and the elders of the people met again uh, to lay plans for putting Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Uh, and when Judas, who betrayed him, realised that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. So he took the 30 pieces of silver back to the leading priests and the elders. I have sinned, he declared, for I have uh, betrayed an innocent man. What do we care? They retorted, that's your problem. Then Jesus, Judas threw the silver coins down in the temple, went out and hung himself. The leading priest picked up the coins. It wouldn't be right to put this money in the treasury uh, since it was payment for murder. And so after some discussion, they finally decided they, they bought a field and used it to make a cemetery. So that reminds us, 
That 30 silver coins, Judas uh, betrayed Jesus and was paid 30 silver coins. But it also reminds <coughs> us, those coins also remind us that when Jesus died, he paid the debt that we owe to God. So that we could be free from our slavery to sin. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians that God paid a high price for you. He says, so don't be enslaved by the world. So, Jessica, thank you. You can put those on the table. The coins remind us, firstly, that Judas was... Are the coins back in the egg? You're a star. I'll tell you what, shall I take the coins out so we can see them? There you go. The coins remind us, firstly, of that Jesus was betrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver, uh, but also that we were bought at a price. <coughs> okay, Reese, your turn. Close your eyes. Reach in, take an egg. Okay. Is that your favourite colour? Yeah. Good man. It is. Okay, brilliant. Right, open the egg for us. Can you, can you do it? What's in there? Ooh. So, in here we have, have a... Hold, hold it up. There's a, there's a strip of cloth. <coughs> Who can tell us, Tyler, have you finished your biscuit? Yes. Brilliant. What's the, what's the strip of cloth about? When Jesus uh, decided to put his fingers back on the bread, he was going to Fantastic. Yes. So, Jesus was taken down from the cross, from the cross, from the cross. Uh, he was wrapped in linen, uh, and he was put in a tomb which was cut out of some rock. And uh, on Easter Sunday morning, it was those strips of linen, those empty burial cloths that were the, uh, the first... Uh, real clear sign that Jesus had risen from the dead. Remember the story? Uh, the, the women went to the tomb and uh, they found the stone rolled away. They looked inside and found the, uh, the grave clothes lying there and, the, uh, and it said that the, the piece that was around his head had been nicely and neatly folded up and placed away from the, from the grave clothes because they weren't needed anymore. First sign that we had that Jesus had risen from the dead. But do you know what else they remind us of? It also reminds us of a bandage, if you like, of healing. Because not only does God forgive us for our sins, but he also heals us and makes us whole. Luke's Gospel tells this story. When they came down from the mountain, uh, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from uh, the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled by evil spirits were healed. Everyone tried to touch him because healing power went out from him and he healed everyone. If you were here last week, we spoke about uh, peace and praying for the peace of our city. And we spoke about how peace is, is firstly a, uh, it's about peace within ourselves, peace with each other, and peace with God. And, you know, people look everywhere, don't they, to try and get hold of that peace. And, and these guys found it in Jesus. Not only does he forgive us, he, he heals us and he makes us whole. Okay, who's next? Jessica, your turn. Close your eyes. Reach in, take an egg. Superstar, right, what's in there? Screwdrivers, they're some nails, aren't they? Okay. So, who can tell me where nails feature in the Easter story? Ebony. Fantastic. So, can, are, you, are you okay holding these? Keep your hands flat so that they don't hurt you. Okay. If I take the egg, you can hold the nails up a little bit so people can see. Yeah, Ebony, brilliant. So, Jesus was, was, was nailed uh, to a cross. Now, they, so these hands. These hands that Jesus used to touch people, to bless people, to help people, those same hands had, no, and they weren't little nails like this, they were, they were big, fat, rough, rough, rusty things. They had nails hammered through them to hang Jesus on a cross. This is what Isaiah says. Isaiah 53, it was our weakness that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins, but he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed. All of us, it says, like sheep have, have gone astray. 
We've left God's paths to follow our own. And yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Thank you, Jessica. The nails remind us that those hands were pierced because of what we did wrong. Close your eyes. You go, go for an egg. Okay, what have you got in there? Sounds like it's an egg. No, let me go. Let me, let me start it. You can finish it. Let me see if you can finish it. What's in there? Stone. Right. Who can tell me about the stone? Where a stone features in the Easter story? Okay, I've heard from Emily, I've heard from Emily, I've heard from Tyler. Anybody else? Khalifa? Shouts, what can hear? The tomb, brilliant. So, after Jesus was, was killed, he uh, was taken down from the cross, put in a tomb, uh, and just to make sure that nobody could come and steal his body and say that he'd risen from the dead, uh, they rolled a big, massive stone. Uh, in front of the entrance to the tomb. Easter Sunday morning. This stone is the first sign that something unusual is perhaps happening. Very early, Luke's Gospel tells us, on Sunday morning, women went to the tomb, taking the spices they'd prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in. But they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. The stone reminds us of what happened that first Easter Sunday morning, that it, that it, it wasn't there. But also, that stone, are you holding it up so everyone can see? Fantastic, that stone also can represent the change that God wants to bring about in our hearts. Ezekiel says this, God saying, I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. So not only does this stone remind us uh, of Easter Sunday morning when the stone was moved, uh, the stone that was impossible to move was moved and Jesus wasn't there. It reminds us of the change that God wants to bring about in our <coughs> hearts. Now, the last egg. I would open it. You can put the stone on the table. Thank you. And here, can you see? It's a bit small. There's a cross. <coughs> this is what Easter is all about. Now, Amelia, you may have been wondering what is inside that envelope? Not an Easter card. It is a prediction that I made earlier this morning. I made a prediction which egg would be the last one left in the bag for me to open. <laughs> now, Jessica and Reese could have picked any of those five eggs. They each picked two and they chose to leave this one which has a cross inside. Now, if my prediction in that envelope is correct, I would like you to give our volunteers a massive round of applause. Reese, uh, Amelia, will you open the envelope and will you clearly tell us what is inside? I hope I've got this one. It is a cross. Okay. Thank you very much. Now. the most common uh, universal symbol of the Christian faith. <coughs> Many of you perhaps will be wearing one right now around your neck. If you, if you wear a cross, show your hands. Lots of you. Okay, fantastic. Have you ever stopped to think about that? The cross was perhaps the most vicious and barbaric <laughs> form of execution that any uh, government or regime has ever come up with. If I were to walk around with, with an, ele an electric chair or some gallows around my neck, 
or a hangman's noose. It wouldn't look quite the same. And if you stop to think, why we walk around with a cross around our neck? You know, it was on the cross that Jesus, the Son of God, and a completely innocent man died to pay the penalty for our sin. For the stuff that we do wrong. It was at that moment of Jesus' death on the cross that the Bible tells us that the curtain in the temple that uh, stopped people from being able to go into the Holy of Holies, that curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. reminds us that all of us can now have direct access to God. <coughs> it was at the cross that the Roman officer and the other soldiers that were there uh, that had just killed Jesus realised that something pretty amazing had just happened and said, this man truly was the Son of God. But most importantly, the thing that I want you to notice about this cross and that cross uh, and the cross on the wall and any other cross, the thing that I want you to remember is that this cross is empty. You'll go in some churches and you'll see lovely ornate carvings of Jesus on the cross. The, cr the cross that you see in this church is empty. When Jesus died, he paid the price for all of our sin. For my sin, your sin. When he died, he made it possible for us to be reconciled to God. But you know, he didn't stay dead. When he rose from the dead, it reminds us that we can put our old life to death. And we can begin a new life with Jesus. Paul writes in, uh, in Corinthians, anyone that is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. The empty cross reminds us that we can have a new life. And the empty cross also reminds us that death no longer has the last word. Jesus, not only was he perfect when he lived, but he also overcame death. One of the, the most famous verses in the Bible, you'll probably know it, John 3.16, For God loved the world so much, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, that means they, they shouldn't die, but will have eternal life. And so the fact that this cross is empty, the fact that Jesus has overcome death, means that for us as well, death isn't the end. There are two things that are certain in life, and I've heard it said. One is tax, and one is death. And even if you manage to work your way around the first one, all of us, unless Jesus comes first, have got an appointment with death. But you know, the empty cross reminds us that even for us, death isn't the end. For anyone who will believe in Jesus and put their faith in him, the promise for us is for eternal life. And so Easter reminds us, thank you to Jessica and Reese for helping us uh, with each of those uh, symbols. Easter reminds us that we have forgiveness from the past. That in Jesus we can find freedom and new life here in the present. And also that we uh, can have eternity with God in the future. And you know, but that is available today. People spend so much time and so much money looking for ways to stay young. I'm not looking at anybody. But I hear they do. <laughs> Or looking for ways to find peace and happiness. <coughs> or looking for ways to feel better about mistakes they've made in the past. And they think about Judas trying to give back the money that he'd taken. Or, or think about the, uh, the, 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 the temple priests knowing that the money had been made for murder. They, they, used, they used it to build a cemetery for, uh, for foreigners and poor people to make them feel a bit better about what they'd done. So many of us try and do that. They, we spend so much time and money making, trying to make ourselves feel better or to look for peace or to look for wholeness or to, to kind of put off the inevitable of ageing and death. And yet today, you can find in Jesus all of that. And it costs God everything. But it is available to each one of us this morning Completely for free. So 
friends, as we begin this countdown to Easter, I'd love to give you an opportunity, uh, if you have not done so before, to, to do just that, to put your faith and your trust in Jesus. <coughs> we're going to pray. And as we pray, if you would uh, do that this morning, if you would like to either place for the first time or replace your trust in Jesus, simply echo the prayer that I pray in your heart. Don't leave here this morning without taking up that opportunity to find freedom from the past, new life now, and hope for the future. It's offered freely. If that is you, then do see me after the service. I'd love to chat with you. I'd love to offer you two things for free. One is a copy of Luke's Gospel. If you don't have a Bible, I'd love to offer you Luke's Gospel. It, uh, part of it, towards the end, tells you the story of Easter that we're coming up to, but also I'd love to give you a, a little book about Jesus, who he is and why he's important. If you would pray this prayer with me this morning, I'd love to speak with you after the service. Don't leave here without knowing that you can find forgiveness, freedom and hope. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for Easter. Thank you for the reminder we've had this morning of your love for us. Lord, forgive us for the times that we have tried to make our own path. Forgive us for the times we've tried to make ourselves happy. Thank you that you love us. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us on the cross so that we could be forgiven and made right with you. Come into our lives. Make us new. Fill us with your spirit. Help us live a life that honours you. May this Easter, may today, be a new beginning for each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Fantastic. Do, do see me afterwards.